Welcome everyone back to another video on the Inside Saints YouTube channel. We're halfway through the season at the mid-season point and um, just wanted to go over some of the trade news that um, are involving the Saints at the moment. At about the mid-season point, um, some of the rumours start to begin and it's no different in 2023 with a number of players being linked to us and a lot of players, a couple of players being linked away from us as well. So. Um, I think I'll take the opportunity to update all of you with the latest trade news involving St Kilda, so let's get straight into it. So generally Zero Hanger is a very good website for finding um, the latest St Kilda trade news. I um, won't get to it yet, but I'll just try and preface um, some of the moves that could potentially be happening. So we've got um, the main, I think, rumour that's going around at the moment in terms of incoming players is Tom DeConing from the Blues. Uh, he's a Rockman. Uh, he's been slightly out of favour at the, at the Blues. Um, in recent weeks, Mark Pittenet, their main Rockman, has been injured. So he's been given a solid run um, in the ones. And he hasn't... He's been okay, but he hasn't really fired too much. So... I think the Blues will still be willing to let him go, especially since there's a lot of demand from other clubs at the moment and um, he could potentially demand quite a big contract. So I think with the Blues recently just signing Pitnet to a four-year deal, four or five years, they're definitely willing to let DeConing go and the Saints are one of the leading contenders for his signature. Uh, I think the Swans and the Cats are still probably the favourites. Um, with the Swans, I think offering him a, a very lucrative deal. Um, the Cats also being interested in a Rockman as well. So there's a lot of rumors going around De Kooning. Um, probably early on, a couple months ago, I think the Saints were leading contenders for him. Given that um, the pitch, I think, would have been a lot more attractive to him um, if you exclude the contract. Uh, his the ability to play alongside Marshall, not having to be that number one rock, and then uh, when he rests up forward, he can also play alongside Max King. So I think in terms of his career and his football, um, St Kilda would be the most attractive um, proposition to him, but uh, if he wants to go for money, I think he will probably prefer the Swans or the Cats, given they have uh, a lot more cap room that they're willing to give up for him. Um, but we don't because we are also chasing a number of other plays, including Paul Adelaide's Miles Bergman, 21 year old uh, from the Bay side, from the Sandringham area. I think we should recall that early in the year, uh, former list boss James Gallagher he indicated that the Saints will be targeting players from that Bay side Sandringham area to try and create that sort of. Um, influx of players from a particular niche area like how the cats do with the Geelong players so yeah Miles Bergen fits that description and he's out of contract and he's uh, reportedly willing to move back to Victoria um, and play his footy there and I think a lot of journalists and um, news outlets think that the Saints are leading um, the race for him I, th I think Sam Edmund recently said that it's either Miles Bergman stays at the power or he moves to the Saints. So, um, yeah, I think he'll be a pretty good fit for our team. He Just last week, he kept Jeremy Cameron to one goal and sub-10 touches. So, he's a good lockdown defender, I think. Um, with Webster, I'm getting a bit older, Patton really not asserting himself in that best 22 anymore. I think Bergman could really take that spot as the lockdown, medium, small defender um, and definitely would be an upgrade in terms of youth and talent in our side. So I think getting him in, um, wouldn't I probably have no problem with it. We would probably have to give up a late first round pick for him, um, which is quite expensive, but I think could be worth it in the long run given his talent and uh, his ability to play also on the wing and potentially through the midfield as well. 
Um, a couple of other Carlton players have also been spoken about with relation to the Saints. Um, Paddy Dow, uh, clearly out of favour of the Blues at the moment. He's out of contract at the end of this year, I think, so he is likely to get delisted and we would be able to pick him up as a delisted free agent at no cost. So I think getting him, um, especially if Jack Bytel does elect to leave, um, he would be good midfield depth. He provides another de- dimension in terms of having that burst, that speed through the midfield, um, gives us that unique edge in that midf- in the midfield that we've been kind of looking for. Um, he hasn't been able to establish himself at AFL level, but we saw what happened with Stocker. Um, he was struggling at Carlton as well, but uh, crossed over at the start of this year and was able to, and has been able to stamp himself in our team as quite an important member there. So, um, yeah, Paddy Dow, I think, would be a decent signing as well. Obviously, that link with our new list manager, Stephen Silvani. So... I think it wouldn't be surprising if uh, we signed him for cheap, the listed free agent for free. And his, I think his teammate Jack Silvani, um, son of our list manager Stephen Silvani, is also of interest to us. Not sure about this one, I don't really know where Jack Silvani would play for us. Um, we have uh, Tim Membry, uh, Mitch Owens. As our third tall, we have Jack Hayes as well, who's also recovering from injury. So I don't really see Silvani fitting into our team. Um, he's quite versatile, he can play uh, on the wing, and he's also recently played in key defence as well. But we have Josh Battle and Tom Highmore in key defence as that third tall, and on the wing, we also have Wood and Charman developing there as well. So they're really don't think there really is any need to getting Silvani and wasting a pick there. I think I'd rather just invest in um, an 18-year-old talent. So, um, not sure about that deal, but uh, I don't think there's um, too too strong of a link there. I think maybe it's just come because Silvani's kind of out of favour at the Blues and um, could be seeking a new start with his father um, at his new club. So, um, I think those four players are the main players we are targeting at the moment, at least we're rumoured to be targeting, targeting. Um, but I do think there are still a couple of other areas we do need to address in this off-season at this point. Um, a key defender to cover, cover Dougal Howard, I think that would be um, one of our top priorities in this off-season. Um, clearly we drafted James Van Ness and Oscar Adam to try and develop a uh, key back, but they're still quite raw. Um, and Adams, I don't think he's going to play key defence. I think um, he's likely to play more of that um, tall halfback kind of role, like uh, Essen is Nick Cox when he initially got drafted. So I don't see Adams being able to play as that strong full back. Um, Van Ness, I do see that in the future, but not at the moment. Um, I think he's still got a bit of development to go. So. Um, yeah, need some patience with him, but I don't think we have time to wait with the way Do Howard has been performing recently. Um, so I think yeah, key defender is something someone we will be addressing, and um, there are several options for that. I think Ben Mackay would be a very good addition to our team as a free agent. Would uh, probably come for no cost if we offer him a decent contract and North Melbourne aren't willing to match it. Um, Harry Himmelberg is also on the market. I think Collingwood are pretty likely there, so I don't think we are much of a chance. Um, and I don't think he's the type of key defender we need anyways. He doesn't really play on that big bodied uh, number one key forward for opposition. So, um, yeah, what we're looking for, I think, is just a 200 centimeter plus big key back who can just shut down the opposition, uh, opposition key forward and also provide something going forward as well and I think Mackay is pretty solid for that um, but we'll have to see what happens there um, and the other position that I think we need addressing is that game winning midfielder that we've been crying out for the past few years um, like we went for Jordan Degoli last year missed out on him and he before he got suspended he was having an exceptional season so um, 
that was uh, a player we really missed out on and could have u- definitely used. I think if we had Jordan Nagoli this year, um, we'd probably be in top four contention, to be honest. With uh, with Jack Steele dropping in form, Brad Crouch, Seb Ross, Hunter Clark all in that midfield, I think it's quite quite a slow midfielder, quite a slow midfield. Um, we don't exactly have the speed through there. Um, we've got a bit of class with Clark in there, but... Um, in the end, we lack speed, that's why we have Gresham in the middle, but um, he looks set to leave as well, we'll touch on that later. So I think, yeah, two targets, key defender, game-winning midfielder, I think those are some a couple of essential uh, puzzle pieces to potentially our future um, contending list. Move on to outgoings now, I think. Uh, Jade Gresham, top of the list, uh, he's been spoken about quite a bit, uh, partly due to his um, underwhelming former AFL level as well as his out of contract status. Um, discussions would have started over the buy um, between his manager and SOS, and I don't think um, things are any better than what they were before in terms of speculation about him leaving. Um, Carlton, I think, are leading the race for him, um, understandably so as well. They do need that type of uh, midfield forward type of player um, in their team, and Gresham suits that profile very well. Um, so could easily be Carlton to swoop in for him, um, and hopefully we can get some sort of a first-round pick for him in terms of compensation. I think that would be a win in general. Um, and the other player who hasn't really been prominent in speculation but has also been raised a bit is Jack Billings. Um, we all know that he's been hampered by injury this year and a bit of last year as well. Um, had a stint in the VFL before getting injured as well. So he just hasn't had a good run at it this year. Um, and honestly, with Filippo's development, I don't really see much of a role for him in the team in the future. Um, I still think he's got a bit of currency in him, um, could get a second round pick for him, a late second rounder, I think that would be a pretty solid win for us if we could do that, um, like how we got with Ben Long last year. Um, yeah, uh, he's been raised, uh, I think Hawthorne might have been showing a bit of interest, um, so yeah, I think he'd be a good fit for one of those developing um, rebuilding teams that need a mature body um, for uh, not a very expensive cost. So Billings has been the target. Uh, I think some uh, experts have linked in with uh, North Melbourne as well, but I don't think those are as strong as Hawthorne. So um, Jack Billings to Hawthorne definitely a possibility, but um, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, in terms of other plays that could potentially move. Um, we can have a look at the Zero Hanger website in terms of off-contract players. Um, so you can see here, we've got a really long list of players to be re-signed, mainly because SOS is still trying to gauge the strengths and weaknesses of our team and um, who needs to be signed on and who should be let go. Um, I can see there being several tough decisions to be made at season's end. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be quite a brutal culling. Um, maybe similar to what we saw from North Melbourne a couple years back when Mason Wood got to the Saints. Um, I don't think it'll be that severe, but I think it might be in that sort of mould. Um, so yeah, we've got Oscar Adams, um, developing at VFL level. Hasn't really shown anything. Um, had a few disciplinary problems last year and has had a consistent run at it at the VFL and hasn't really shown much so I wouldn't be surprised if he was uh, let go. Burns has played a good, decent role on the wing for us this year um, in the absence of Dan McKenzie so I think um, he will probably hold with a one or two year contract probably just a one year. Um, Bytel I think still has the opportunity to try and redeem himself um, but really our depth there in the midfield with those inside midfielders is really deep and um, Bytel just isn't getting a look in so um, wouldn't be surprised if he's delisted as well might be similar to the Nathan Freeman situation of a few years back where you really want to keep him but there really just isn't a role for him in the team um, so 
uh, he might be let go there. Tom Campbell, I think, um, maximum one year, I think, extension. I think there's no, not really any point in delisting him. I think he's on cheap money, um, 30, 32 years old maybe, and um, it's very good backup depth in the ruck for in case uh, Marshall goes down. So I think might hold on to him for another year as uh, Max Heath keeps developing. Um, so yeah, Campbell I think should be pretty safe. Hunter Clark I think will earn an extension. Um, has was pretty important through the midfield before his injury. Um, gave us that class through the middle. So I think he's pretty safe for at least a couple of years extension. Caulfield has been injured all year. Um, would be really stiff f for him to get delisted considering he was a first round pick and has shown that he can take it to the AFL level. Just has had a few injury problems over the past couple of years. I hope we persist with him um, with maybe a one year deal um, on little money to try and give him the opportunity to try and uh, get his body right and earn his position back in the team. Um, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Leo Connolly uh, has shown a bit at VFL level this year in the midfield, but ultimately I don't really see him um, staying on for much longer. Gresham, we've spoken about him, potentially could leave. Higgins, I think, is on the verge of an extension. Um, uh, I think multi-year, maybe three years, two or three years. Um, so yeah, I think things are looking good for Higgins there. Highmore has been stuck in the VFL, waiting for his opportunity to get in. I think the only way he gets into the team is if um, Battle goes down or Wilkie, so... Um, yeah, I think our third tour is in pretty good stead. Highmore might seek um, some more opportunities elsewhere, but... Um, could easily just be delisted because I uh, don't really need him. And Van Ness and Oscar Adams are developing as well, so... Um, it'll be a tough decision there. Jones has been plagued by injury. I think if he doesn't get a game by season's end, I think he'll be gone as well. Um, but yeah, uh, at his best, obviously a very good player, but just needs to get on the park um, to show that. McKenzie, also the same. Um, I'm really hoping, even if he doesn't play this year, I'm really hoping we keep him because he's so important for us when he's fit. But... Um, ultimately, Sauce and Ross don't really have um, that clear picture around how McKenzie does play and they might um, make an ill-formed decision to delist him or whatever. Um, McLennan, I think he'll be given another opportunity uh, since considering his injury and uh, it's only his first year in the system. Um, it would be very stiff to delist him this early on in his career. Uh, Paris has shown pretty good signs in the VFL to be honest and I think uh, he'll earn an extension. Um, Ross has been quite underwhelming at times throughout this year but also very good at times as well. Um, very good leader in that midfield. I think he'll stay on whether it be just a one year contract or a couple of years. Um, I don't think I see him leaving unless another club comes calling. Stocker uh, crossed over at the start of the year and he's been in very good form for us uh, as a medium sized tough defender um, has really locked down his spot in the team and I think he'll be offered at least two years um, further in his contract. Webster has also been a pretty important member of our team um, as the lockdown medium defender I think. Um, considering his age I think he'll probably get one year. Um, Maybe two, but I think one year um, is appropriate there, considering uh, we might be targeting Bergman and um, hopefully Patton can find some of his 2020 form as well. Um, and then finally, Mason Wood, I think he'll be offered at least a year as well, considering um, he's in the conversation for all Australian selections. So, um, yeah, I think he definitely deserves an extension. He's a critical member of the club culture as well behind the full in, inside the four walls as well so um yeah he definitely deserves an extension so i think uh we will see at least maybe five delistings out of these out of this crop um potentially some others from um under contract players um 
Yeah, Matthew Allison, maybe he's injured. Um, and um, Pine or Campbell. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think just from this list here, uh, the off contract for 2023, we'll see maybe five players going out this season. So um, there's definitely going to be a lot of change um, considering it's Ross Lyon's first year at the helm. Um, assuming he's probably going to have a pretty decent stint at the club. He's going to want to set himself up with the best list. Um, and obviously our list has been criticised for not exactly being the best um, over the past few years so um, we're going to want to try and rejuvenate it um, with some youngsters and some um, proven talent and unfortunately some other players have to make way for that so yeah uh, I think that will do it for this mid-season trade update um, there are, yeah a lot of incomings being rumoured um, from Carlton. I'm not sure if I really want De Kroening or Silvani, but I think Dow is pretty decent midfield depth. Um, and Bergman also would be a very good get um, as one of our defenders. So, um, yeah, that I think those two targets would be pretty nice. Um, Gresham, Billings both on the table to potentially leave. Um, and uh, obviously a bunch of these off-contract players potentially could leave as well. So um, there's a lot for Sauce and Gubby to decide on. Um, but in the end, I think really what we need is a key defender and a game-winning midfielder um, to really try and uh, give ourselves the best opportunity at a Premiership Assault in the next couple of years. So thank you for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys um, had some thought about this topic um, make sure to leave a comment your thoughts on who you guys think should um, be targeted by the Saints in terms of incomings and who you guys wouldn't be surprised to see leave the club um, at the end of the year make sure to subscribe to the channel for future content and I'll see you guys in the next video